Hi there, welcome back to the next video. And in this video, as you can see, the topic is what is data science? And if you have observed in every other journal, blog, or even from the person, you will hear that uh, they want to go in the data science field. So that's why today I want to show you or I want to tell you about some of the history of the data science how it became popular, uh, what really has contributed and give you some meaningful idea about uh, what really the data science is directly from the horse's mouth. That means the person who has uh, uh, created this word as well as those guys who have actually contributed for its success or make it more popular. So all of that I will talk about and finally I will talk about the data science process so do watch it till the end so that you have the complete knowledge well I would say maximum knowledge if not complete about the data science because even I cannot uh, guarantee about the complete data science knowledge because the field is really vast and you need years of experience to really know each and everything about the data science so let's go ahead and uh, first of all see uh, about uh, who really created this buzzword of data science. So the name as you can see is William S. Cleveland who in 2001 wrote the article or the paper data science and action plan for expanding the technical areas of the fields of statistics. So the summary is basically over here and I will read it for you an action plan to enlarge the technical areas of statistics that's important enlarge the technical area of the statistics and if you have seen my previous video I've talked about the machine learning which I said it's basically the most advanced version of the statistics so that's that's basically I have adopted uh, that term from here that enlarge the technical areas of statistics focuses on the data analyst the plan sets out six technical areas of work for a university. Now, this is more of a university specific wording that he is saying that they need to focus on the six technical areas and advocates a specific allocation of resources devoted to research in each area and to the courses in each area. So they wanted to develop a course related to the data science and uh, that's what uh, William as Cleveland has suggested. Now the value of technical work is judged by the extent to which it benefits the data analyst either directly or indirectly and that's how you see that over the period of years the stream the data science stream has evolved so much that uh, you see a lot of different aspects around it and which I will talk to you in my last slide. The, the plan is also applicable to government research labs and corporate research organization and uh, that's absolutely true whether it is a government organization today or it is a corporate organization they are looking at the data science as the field of study so that they can take the maximum output from the data that they are storing but was this enough to really uh, make the data science popular I mean an article and understanding creating the courses well I say no and I'll give you the reason why so this uh, approaches that you use is in the data science things like machine learning algorithms for example random forest logistic regression uh, XGBoost or even advanced learning like neural network for example neural network specifically was available sometime in the sometime around the 1960s that means you had the algorithm available in the 1960s but it was not popular why because the capacity the processing power that was needed to basically store and process the data was made only available in the recent it was available in the recent first couple of years of the um, 2000 that means around 2000 2001 or 2002 and if you remember sometime around the 1999 the dot-com bubble was burst and a lot of uh, stock come a lot of IT stock uh, were uh, come down to heavily almost like pennies uh, from hundreds of dollars of share and that's where really the uh, era of big data started so this has really contributed uh, in the success of the data science because now the disk the hard disk were present 
in a very cheap price from various different companies because the IT market was going down and everybody was uh, offering their services or or these products at a very cheap price as well as some advancement into the technology. So all of this actually uh, turned out into an ecosystem where the era of big data really started and that contributed very heavily into the uh, success of the data science but this this era started sometime around uh, 2002 or 2003 and if you remember and i'll try to connect it with the google because google also uh, at that time pretty new search engine sometime around 1999 or 2000 it, it started uh, and 2002 or 2003 it started gaining the popularity and in in that popularity the major uh, a uh, problem or the major uh, issue for google was to basically store in basically first of all crawl entire web data store it using the page rank algorithm uh, basically uh, find out which page has the most maximum relevance and uh, that they could really solve it with the with this uh, start of the big data era where the commodity hardware and all were really cheap and they developed their own google uh, file system Google distributed file system which they then released sometime around 2007 and uh, that's where uh, engineers some of the engineers from the Yahoo basically adopted and make it like a little bit more matured as an open library which is Hadoop as you call it today so because of this uh, all of all of the ecosystem for uh, big data was really developed in the period of uh, 7 to 10 years and sometime around uh, 2010 mike lucidus who is the vice president of content strategy for o'reilly media really helped to bring data science into mainstream in 2010 with his article what is data science i will present uh, all of the links related to the article in the description so if you are interested in uh, knowing those in details you can read it but I wanted to uh, basically let you know who are all the guys who were really contributed into the success of the uh, data science, what it is today, and everybody is getting benefited out of it. Well, Mike Lugidus really helped, and after that, uh, Thomas H. Devonport and DJ Patel from the... So, Thomas H. Devonport is from the Harvard University, a big advocate of the big data analytics, and really helped companies uh, adopt the power of analytics and DJ Patel if you have heard is like one of the very first data scientists even appointed by the government of the USA for doing the data science work they basically coined this uh, um, term as well as article uh, saying that data scientist the sexiest job of the 21st century I think they did it sometime around 2012 again the link of the article is present in the description you can go ahead and read it but uh, this I would say in my view really really uh, work catchy uh, for all of the guys uh, whether it somebody is in the company or uh, coming out of a graduation whomsoever has read it. It, it has been used so many times in so many articles uh, from the various different bloggers as well as publishers that uh, it has I believe it has really contributed to its popularity at its best. So these are the guys who really contributed into the data science journey and uh, made it the most demanding job that is available today. So right now, if you look at any government uh, or any private organization data, there are millions of jobs out there for um, in, into the field of data science. As the data science is pretty big field, so there are different job types which are available, but they don't have enough skilled labor to uh, to do the data science work and that's why people whether from uh, coming out from the engineering or graduation or MBA or any other field like even chartered accountant they they all are really interested in knowing okay what's really data science is and it's if so many jobs are available why don't I just go ahead and do some courses to, to get some experience into the data science and make make a fulfilling career so so that's that's where you know uh, the the trend is going right now if you see every other person wants to go into the data data science field but 
those who are new if you are new into the data science i would really like to show you a process and the relevant jobs that are available today uh, into the field of the data science so here it is the data science process if you see the first process uh, into the data science again this is a very very high level and don't uh, look at these guys i have not uh, deleted that but the idea is uh, just focus it on the title that first process is basically the acquired data acquired data is uh, is one of the very first and foremost part uh, for any data analysis whether within the data science or outside of the data science and the data is available from the various system uh, sources for example if you have a crm system or any other system into the uh, or operation system into into your company they basically provide the data either in the form of direct stream from which you can directly provide the data or into the csv file or data is going into the databases so one has to be really really good in acquiring the data from the data sources some of the people if you don't believe uh, with the title um, data engineer are heavily involved in acquiring data and maintaining data so that the next steps can be done very easily so the first title i told you about the data engineer whose main responsibility is to maintain to to basically provide their um, excellent capabilities uh, to gather the data uh, and uh, from the various different system and maintain it in an infrastructure so that the next steps can be done very easily and the next step as you can see is the process and explore data again bit of an overlap between the uh, data engineer and data science because uh, uh, sometimes happens that uh, the acquiring of the data become quite a regular process and nothing much of an effort required and data engineer can really uh, give bit of an help in terms of process and explore data in terms of sta standards process standard process like finding the outliers from the data or setting up the uh, cleaning of the data which is nothing but the processing the data and exploring the data is more of a uh, job of a person who is good in analyzing data it can be a data analyst data visualization expert or even uh, data science if you don't have these two guys so basically explore data is something which is uh, which is a job of a data analyst or a data scientist and process data we can see either the data scientist can do if the person has the skill or if uh, if it is really a big process then you will have a dedicated data engineer to not only acquire the data but process the data which then can be explored by the data analyst or the data scientist and then after that the real work of the machine learning engineer i'm using a very specific term machine learning engineer that the person who knows about the programming into the r or python or the relevant language which has the algorithm for example matlab and they know uh, how to do the parameter tuning how to you know run the entire process because it's an iterative process that once you apply the algorithm the results are coming out now either the machine learning engineer has if the person has the knowledge of the statistics along with the programming and that's what it makes a complete data scientist if the person has that knowledge can interpret the results and make it an iterative process to further improve it or if you in you or if you or in your company uh, you want to keep these two jobs separate because there are like hundreds of models uh, on which much you want machine learning engineers to be just focused on making the iterative process based on the statistical analyst or the real data scientist who who is responsible for analyzing and making the prediction is basically giving the feedback back to the machine learning engineer and machine learning engineer is then basically improving the algorithm based on the parameter tuning or various other different approaches that are available and finally the making the prediction that's where you are interpreting the results that is coming out of the algorithm and making and helping the company making a prediction for example what will be my sales in the next quarter whether this particular customer uh, will result in a bad loan or a good loan will it going to rain today or tomorrow or maybe how will the monsoon be so that you can advise accordingly to the farmers just think like how much impact 
these this entire process can have on the entire economy if you are able to better understand well in advance same is with the company if they can understand the entire ecosystem for example even companies today are um, uh, you know applying it in a different processes like hr processes to really predict not you know they don't want hr to spend countless number of hours just to select the resume just train the algorithm and make the prediction based on the um, based on what hr used to do earlier so hr uh, work is finally just to get the shortlisted resume out of the algorithm and and basically do the work same is the case with the stock market they have created the algorithm that means based on the technical analyst with let's say hundreds of technical analysts will do a job based on the looking at the chart looking at the different metrics one algorithm basically can do a job of uh, your 100 technical and fundamental analyst who will really give the output to make the right prediction or make the right trade so this is this is really really vast every other company is acquiring it and these are at a very very high level the processes that you will see in the data science process which will basically help you understand the different types of jobs that are available data engineer data analyst data visualization expert data machine learning engineer and finally the either the data scientist and the business users and uh, then according to your interest let's say you are very good into uh, programming and like to play with the data maintain the data you can be a data engineer or if you are really interested in exploring the data you have that creative mindset where you are really good in interpreting the data and exploring the data making the visualization you can go into the field of uh, exploring the data again a very very high demand of visualization expert because the right visualization can really save a lot of time and help explain what really machine learning is doing in that black box to the end user and then the machine learning engineer is another job type which which you can uh, take if you are really good into the programming wants to like uh, uh to play with the algorithms want to create more algorithm wants to improve algorithms that's where you can really try your hand and finally making the prediction the real data science job by interpreting the output which basically the real i would say the real data science job or a data scientist job who has who is spending like uh, countless number of months and years to really understand and uh, the data really interpreting the results and helping the company to improve its future so that's uh, pretty much about the data science process and i hope this video has given you some good idea about uh, the history of data science how it evolved so how uh, data big data contributed and the different people who contributed it and uh, so these this i try to cover mostly from the perspective uh, from the interview question because sometimes even in interview they you face these kind of questions like how it all started what do you think is the reason that uh, data science is uh, today why it is today the where it is and uh, what should be the data science process what are the phases that are involved so i hope this those sort of questions you will be able to answer if they are coming in your interview as well as making you knowledgeable about the data science field if you really are planning to make a career into the data science so wish you all the best guys and uh, if you like the video hit the like button and do share it with your friends and with your colleagues uh, so that everybody helps you do the discussions about it and if you have any question you can always ask me in the comments and i'll be gladly uh, able to help you thank you so much